Japan. And as far as Luti, she, she beat Sun of China as well as Tahi of France. Yeah, I think the big one for me with Volterra was beating Zhu, world number 11, in the, the round of 64. Uh, but as you said, Jeff, uh, Choi Injun uh, is an established name on, on the, uh, the fencing circuit. And uh, no real surprise to see her here. Uh, she'll have bags of experience in terms of her knowledge of uh, what it's like to fence in a finals. And we are underway. It's all about how Ricky Volterra handles the pressure. Both cancelling each other out or matching each other for their movement and uh, aggression. Both searching for some actions. No one's taken a risk yet. It's the feeling out period and the feeling out period ended right there with Troy with an attack to the thigh. Quite a way to start the bet, start the bat. Right handed Pomla Choi is the uh, world number four. She's only won one World Cup actually, and that was back in uh, 2019 in Dubai. She's got a couple of bronze medals as Multera says, anything you can do, I can do two. And we've seen that earlier uh, from Multera where she fleshes with an attack almost knowing it's going to be short and then continuing on and hitting. Multera is also uh, 30 years old. She's the world number 81. And this will be her first ever World Cup medal, in fact her first fencing international senior medal of any colour. And you can see that Choi is not rushing, she's not really going after her here, she's maintaining her discipline, staying patient, but she for me is controlling the footwork dance at the moment. And getting a huge advantage here, she pushes Molterra to the end of her side of the piste. Uh, taking the blade. We talked earlier on today, Jeff, about uh, the significant drop in the use of blade actions here. I think both of us agree it's probably down to the fact that these guys haven't really been fencing or training as, as hard and as much as they would because of the, the obvious. Not sure of the reason why, but it was clearly noticeable. There was less blade actions than we normally see. And meanwhile, Malterra has uh, committed herself twice with uh, flesh attacks. Once she got a single light, once she got a, a double. It's Molterra who's leading the, the, the race here on the, on the feet. Trying to find the blade, a beautiful octave bind. Just pushing Choi's blade out of the way before coming back up. Uh, Let's watch there. She takes the blade down in the octave, the eighth parry, um, and makes the attack. Now that's three touches by Molterra with, with the flesh, and twice with the blade, once without. So she's definitely been the aggressor and taking some risks. Yeah, I fancy this she'll... Um Back off now. She's got that lead. A one point lead is uh, perhaps more important uh, in Epi than it is the other two weapons. Looks like they will go to the break here, Karen. They certainly will. So we have our first three minute period done and dusted, and the athletes will get to go and talk with their coaches. Uh, now we I'm okay, getting a little bit of a replay here, but down on the left I can tell you that it's uh, Chang Taesuk, national Korean coach, talking with Choi in Jun, and at the other end of the piste, David Kessler, who coaches the German men's and women's FA team, despite being a Hungarian national himself, wears the German tracksuit with pride. So, Karen, for me, for the next period, it seems to me that Choi is a little bit vulnerable when Molterra attacks. 
So I look for Chua to be a little bit busier and not let Molterra set up that attack. She can do that by beating the blade, moving in and out with her footwork. But she's let Molterra take the blade a few times. Of course, right after we said we didn't see a lot of blade actions today, naturally. But anyway, Molterra has been controlling the, dis the distance and the dance so far in the first period. Yeah, she certainly took control of it, and uh, the minute break goes just like that. They've had the chance to speak to their coaches and take on some fluid, uh, but I, I think, you know, for, like you say, for whatever reason, the blade contact's not been used, or blade movements are not being used as much here as we'd seen previously. It's interesting that Montero is using them in this final. We're going to the second period with the German 3-2 up. I look for Troy to be disruptive, not let Molterra set up that attack. <laughs> and she did so there with an attack, and Molterra was waiting for it, made a parry and missed on the riposte, and Troy hit on the remise. Whether she planned it or not, it worked. Well, interesting here. Montero definitely trying to uh, re-establish control of where the action's happening on the piece and, and control the footwork. But you saw there Choi making a deliberate effort not to allow uh, Montero to push her back. She just held her ground. And so Montero, on the second attempt, just went, right, well, I'm going to hit you then. And, and took the blade again. Just started to move that sword hand out a little bit to try and create some angles. Just ever so slightly moved it out towards the right. So as I see it here, Molterra has scored five touches all on the same action. So at some point Choi is going to have to figure out a way to counter that. Well I wonder the next time that Molterra attacks if Choi actually steps in. Just missing on the first approach to the low line there, Troy. Open the door was fast enough, you have to say, the Korean to react and, and salvage a double. It really was. See how Choi is just not allowing for the distance to close, to, 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 she's not allowing to be pushed back. She's holding her ground. In this case, ended with a ducking counter. And, counter and maybe just the duck at that time threw Molterra off, but again, Molterra is going to dwell on every action. The same thing, and it's been working for the most part. did step into that one. I, th I think it would be effective for Choi to step in a little bit earlier, maybe take the blade and try to catch Molterra on her preparation. She's very comfortable attacking from the distance that she's been attacking at. And um, I think the distance has to be broken by Choi, maybe get a little bit closer uh, before Molterra starts. So now both fences have moved their hands further out, away from the body. Referee called halt before the final action. The Choi is asking for a replay, but the referee called halt. Whether it was right or wrong for him to done that, you cannot begin a new action after the call of halt. Yeah, of course, uh, for the video review straight away, Choi. And... Uh, Alifala is compelled to go to the video, we've asked, but uh, I think in this instance we don't have sound on there.
video replay and Alan Fanner would just come back and say, I, I called halt and the action came after the halt. So they, no hit. They that. hadn't passed. The ref might have called halt a little bit early, but it doesn't matter. No new action can begin after the halt, and that began after he called halt. Let's see what he calls. No touch. And Choi loses a video appeal as a result of that. Does someone take a risk with 15 seconds left in the period? Or do they back off? Well, they're not backing off. They're keeping each other honest, but uh, no risks taken there. Uh, I have to say, seven apiece, uh, and it's job not so badly done so far by Ricky Montero. I view this, the bout is 7-7, but it doesn't feel that way to me, because it feels that Montero has been very successful in the attack, but Choi is somehow held in there. I think it's to her benefit to make her actions from a closer distance. And um, as long as she's able to negate Molterra's attack, I think she has a chance to win this bout. But up until now, she hasn't negated it, but the score still is 7-7. So your feeling is that Choi is actually going to uh, change something up and she's she just saved it for the final period? No, I thought she was going to do it in that period, but I think maybe she will do it in, the, in this period. I think the key for her, for Choi, is not to let Molterra set up the attack. She's hit every time except once when she ducked right there. That's the only time that she caused Molterra to miss. So I think Molterra is more uh, at risk if Choi gets in close before the attack starts and maybe she tries to attack in the preparation. He hasn't done it up until now. Well, we're about to find out who is going to make it through to the first Women's F8 World Cup in over a year. Will it be... Troy and John or Carla Montero. So Montero going for it and in close quarters she's not going to win that battle against a slightly shorter athlete and that could be all that Choi needs now. Choi can sit back, 2.33 on the clock so we've got to just be conscious of passivity here. That's the one thing Molterra didn't want to do was to get in close like that because Choi did have an advantage with that little boxing stuff inside and she was able to score. Oh, that's a lovely hit. Choi just dancing in and out distance, playing around the uh, guard, and then Montero made the mistake of closing the distance up without actually committing to anything. And what was big about that touch is that it was a surprise. Choi had not fainted much to the toe in the entire bout, and Montero never saw that coming. Isn't that interesting now? Because now Choi is able to allow Malterra to attack and just go try to get doubles like that. If she's able to get doubles up two touches, it's a huge advantage. Yeah, with a score now up into double figures for Choi, doubles start to become a bit of an enemy. Well, the attack failed, but Choi's sharp reactions got her out of that as well. And I just start to see a sense of uh, hopelessness with the German. She's still pressing, she's still working hard. She needs to press. Well, there's a good one. A little second intention there. She waited for Choi to commit herself, but was waiting with a repost. That's actually the first time we've seen that from Walter, the whole bout. So now she's sh she has two different options. She can go straight or she can do a second intention because we, she was only going straight up until then.
Got a duck and counter. So that's twice now Will Terra attacked and Choi just simply ducked. Let's watch the replay here. It was right under, over her. Wow. And it's not that she was you know, really massively out of distance. Will Terra, I think, expected that uh, Choi wouldn't be able to react that far. Yeah, she was definitely in distance. She had been hitting her in that the whole bout. Right. Uh, just again, a little half hearted, not uh, committing completely to that, or maybe not fully planning it out. And again, stepping into distance without a real plan. Yep, and it's been 7 2 for Troy after the break. It's simply amazing how this bout for two periods was pretty even. Moltero's controlling it, and that's that. Beautiful uh, finish there from Troy and John. Referee just asking the athletes to stand on the line before saluting. And uh, it is Troy and John who is through to our women's final. A, a really uh, intriguing bout, Jeff. Yes, it was a very good bout for two periods. You would never have expected it to end the way it did in the third period. But I think once Troy got that lead, um, she had a huge advantage because she was able to uh, pick off Molterra. Malter well, they'll clear away from the piece. A great day for Ricardo Montero. Bronze medal here, her first senior international medal. And uh, asked she probably is a little disappointed right now. I think she'll wake up tomorrow morning and see the hunk of medals on the bedside table. I'll be very happy. <laughs> no question about that. We move on to our second semi final. Another fancied. Korean Kang Yumi will be going up against Alia Luti of France. As you can see at the end there, it, when they got in close, Troy was a little bit quicker on the feet and uh, was able.